If you have an idea that you want to license, but you aren't sure if the idea is good enough, use these three steps to validate the idea and see if it's worth investing your time and your money into it and to help you pitch a solid business case for licensing to your prospective companies. Hi, Lisa Lloyd here with more tips, tricks, and strategies to help you optimize and accelerate your invention licensing business success. If you like what you learn here today, please hit the like and subscribe button. It's a free way to support me doing this. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be the first to know whenever I post a new video each and every week. A new product idea has to be worth it for both the inventor to invest their time and money and resources in, as well as a company to make a good business decision for whether or not to license it. And companies don't make that decision just based on a gut feeling. They will take your product behind the scenes, possibly show it to other companies like retailers or some of their customers to get feedback, maybe even do some customer research to truly define and, and qualify your idea as being good enough for them to license. And you should be doing the same thing. So let's look at three of the steps that I take to validate all of my ideas and make sure that I'm investing my time and resources into something that truly has the best possible opportunity based on the information that I'm able to gather. Obviously, there are unknown unknowns that we can't know until we actually start talking to companies. But based on the research, at least gives us the confidence and the competence to move forward and make a good business decision. So the first step is validating the idea. Is it a problem that is actually worth solving? Just because you're going about your day and you recognize a problem uh, with something that you're doing and you think, oh my God, there's just got to be a better way to do this, doesn't mean that the pain of that problem is a big enough pain for enough people. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to prove it with real world sales. A lot of people get stuck here. The reality is you just need to be able to illustrate that the pain is a big enough pain for enough people. And this is typically done by doing customer service, or excuse me, customer persona interviews. Now I explained how to do this thoroughly in this video and I'll put a link to this video as well as the document that comes with it to help you perform customer insight interviews and get the data that you need to build your confidence and therefore move forward with competence with that new idea. But doing these interviews will help you learn from an empathetic standpoint what is going on behind the scenes for other people who are using similar or competing products and how they're dealing with the problem that you discovered. So say, for example, you're going about your day and maybe you uh, are a bit of a gardener and your hose, every time you pull it out to go water everything, constantly gets stuck. and uh, you know, a tin can or whatever is just not good enough for you. You have an idea in your head for how you're going to solve it. But the goal here is to uncover how other people currently deal with that problem so that you can make sure that your solution empathetically addresses that pain point for a big enough audience, not just based on your own personal experience. Your experience gets things started, but now you need a really holistic view of how the world at large is dealing with that problem. So doing customer, customer persona interviews, getting the customer insights on how they deal with that problem is not only going to help you address whether it's a big enough problem, like it hurts enough for enough people, but it will also help you learn whether or not how to go about creating features that will solve that problem empathetically, not just in your case, but in the case of all of those users. Can you see how that makes you a better inventor and helps you move forward with the confidence to pitch to companies later? And the second step is to validate the market, which is the competitive research. So it's taking a look at all those other competitors that are out there currently trying to solve the same problem that you addressed. Obviously, companies need to be able to see that you are offering them the opportunity to license something that will give them a dramatic competitive advantage in the marketplace because we know that people don't buy products, they don't switch from what they currently use to buy new products easily. Studies show us, in fact, that it's five times more expensive to get customers to make the switch than it is to earn a new customer. So to do this, you need to thoroughly and exhaustively compare all of the competition and contrast it to the idea that you have in your head. Now, I like to do this twice. I like to do it once before I do the customer interviews 
because I want to at least have a general idea of what products they may be talking about before we talk about them. When they tell me what they use, for example, what they like and don't like about what they use, that's going to give me a lot of insight into what is most meaningful consistently in all of those products so that I know that I include those features in my product as well, Um, but possibly even eliminate because sometimes subtraction is innovative, right? Making something less complicated is an improvement over adding more features. So you get a lot of different learning out of that, doing the competitive research before and having those conversations. And then I go back and I do it again after because often I'll hear about either new buzzwords to use to do my keyword research and find new products that I didn't find the first time based on those new keywords. Or I might learn about products that I didn't find originally and just wanna compare and contrast what it does and how it works to what I'm thinking about. Now, just based on this alone, I may choose to just walk away. There may be a learning that comes out of this that tells me that it's there's not a good business case for moving on with this. And I can do this very quickly, basically just a couple hours of work uh, before I spend a lot of time and or money developing the idea. Then once I have all of this data, if I feel confident with the idea that's in my head, I will begin to build the solution, whether that's sketching it, uh, actually building, cutting things apart, putting them back together, working with my 3D printer, molding things. I have a lot of videos on how to do all of that here, so check those out if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. But I start developing a model, a working model, a Frankenstein model, a prototype, if I really can get that far down the road, so that I've completely fleshed out what that idea is going to be. Now, with the competitive research and the consumer research in in paired up, you have enough data to support really thinking through what the features are and the benefits that people will get from those features to invent something. And this is where we need to do our patent search. So the third step is to validate the patentability. Now, why do you need a patent and why does it even matter? Because most companies are not interested in licensing something that you don't own the rights to. Make sense? And if you license them the rights to the patent, they not only have the competitive advantage of this awesome new technology that you've come up with, but you've given them the exclusive right because that's what a patent does. It prevents anybody else in the world from making, using, or selling that technology without your express permission. So when you license it to a company, having a patent or at least a patent pending, which is most often going to be okay, is part of what will make the business case for them to decide to license. So just do a quick patent search in the very early days, or you may end up doing this several times as you continue to think through different iterations of what is the best way to solve this problem that you've identified. Um, You're going through, you you can use either the USPTO.gov website, or you can go to google.com slash patents. I hope that you'll consider it along with validating the customer and understanding their needs so that you can compare and contrast those needs, how those needs are currently solved by the existing competition, and then ultimately invent a solution that addresses that competition in a way that delivers on a benefit promise to those customers that you talk to in a way that's exciting enough that they would wanna make the switch and is also different enough that gets you a patent, which is the third thing that you're going to validate. And with all of that packaged together, you'll have all of the language, confidence, competence that you need to properly pitch this to a company much later when it comes time to license. I hope you like what you learned today. If you do like what you heard today, please share it within your social network. It helps me get the word out and hit the like and subscribe button as a free way to support me doing this. In the meantime, dare to dream and imagine what's possible when powered by innovation.